Hi everyone, so today we're going to learn about something called as parity, which is something very fundamental to mathematics, especially number theory, but um, it's a very important problem solving tool when it comes to Olympiad mathematics. So we're going to see how we can actually employ parity, a very powerful problem solving technique in one of our problems. So without wasting any time, let's get started. So this is a question from the uh, team selection test for the country of Georgia. And it is day three, problem number seven in the year 2005. And uh, in this video, we're going to be looking at how we can maybe exploit this parity and this perfect squares. Uh, a couple of things over there. Then we're obviously going to look at induction. And then we have some book suggestions for senior math Olympiads. And at the end, a similar but challenging problem. This video is sponsored by Chinta.com. Since 2010, Chinta has trained thousands of students from all around the world in Mathematical Olympiads, Physics Olympiads, Computer Science and Informatics Olympiads, ISI CMI entrances, and research projects for school and college students. Okay, so we have a very short but uh, interesting question, really. And we need to determine all positive integers n, positive integers, or in other words, natural numbers n, for which this quantity is a perfect square, right? So, 2 raised to the power n minus 1 times n plus 1 is m square for some natural number m, right? It's a, it's, it's a, it's a perfect square. So, whenever I have this, um, a, a setup like this, I can take this one to the other side and just kind of factorize this, right? So, 2 raised to the power n minus 1 times n is equal to m square minus 1, which is m plus 1 times m minus 1. And I think this is uh, very common to all questions in which we have perfect squares factorization, parity, you know, reducing mod m. These are a couple of ideas that you should keep in your mind because really it's uh, very rarely that we see a question that goes beyond these ideas. But anyways, so if we actually check at n equals to 1, what do we get? We'll have 2 raised to the power 1 minus 1, which is 0, times 1, is equal to m square minus 1, right? Or in other words, m square minus 1 is equal to 1. So we see that m square is equal to 2, which is obviously not n integer it's not an it's not a natural number right so n is equal to one gives no solution and we know that n is a natural number so therefore we can safely conclude that n is one or or you know in other words n is greater than or equal to two okay perfect now then if you actually notice this left hand side two raised to the power n minus one times n is equal to m plus one times m minus one now left hand side this thing is always even for all n greater than 1, it is always and always even because we have this power of 2 which is always going to be even. So this entire quantity also needs to be even. Now, now what we notice is that m minus 1 and m plus 1, both of these quantities, have the same parity. Right? Which means that either both of them are odd or both of them are even. Parity essentially oddness or evenness of a particular number. Right? If, if two numbers are either both odd or both even, we say that both have the same parity. If one of them is odd and the other one is even, we say that they have different parity. Okay. So m plus 1 and m minus 1 have the same parity. And we want their product to be even. So therefore, m plus 1 and m minus 1 are both even. Or in other words, that you can just imply that m is odd. Right? Now, because m is odd, I can write m as 2a plus 1 for some a belonging to some, let's say, natural number. And when I substitute this into our original equation, I'll get 2 raised to the n minus 1 times n is equal to 2a plus 1 plus 1 times 2a plus 1 minus 1. m plus 1, m minus 1, you know. Now, what I'm going to do is I can write this as, um, I can take a 4 common over here and I can write this as a times a plus 1. And if I divide by 4 on both sides of this equation, I'll get a times a plus 1 is equal to 2 raised to the power n minus 3 times n. Now, again, we're going to employ parity. The so parity is involved in a lot of places over here. Okay. Now we notice that a and a plus 1, these two quantities have opposite parity. Right? If one of them is even, the other one will obviously be odd. If one of them is odd, the other one will obviously be even. But the right hand side is always even. What does that mean? The e it essentially means that the even term is gobbling up the entire evenness of the right hand side. 
right? So you can just distinctly split this up into two, two cases, right? So case one will be, let's say where A is even. So that implies A gobbles up all the even powers. So two raised to the power n minus three times B. And obviously A plus one is C such that BC is equal to N, right? This is the construction for our, this particular case. Now, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a claim. So my claim is that two raised to the power N minus three is in fact greater than N for all n greater than or equal to 6 and how are we going to prove this we're going to prove this via induction okay so let's first test a base case what is the base case it is n is equal to 6 so 2 raised to the power 6 minus 3 greater than 6 we can see that this is very true 2 raised to the power 3 is greater than 6 which is true 8 is greater than 6 now now what do we do next we just claim our induction hypothesis right we just write down our induction hypothesis which we essentially intend to prove so we suppose that k greater than equal to 6 for all k greater than equal to 6 we have 2 raised for k minus 3 greater than k right this is our obviously our induction hypothesis and once we have assumed this for k we need to prove for k plus 1 so 2 raised power k plus 1 minus 3 is greater than k plus 1 or in other words i need to prove that 2 raised power k minus 2 is greater than k plus 1 this is what i need to prove with the assumption that this is true right so 2 raised power k minus 3 greater than k. This is true by our induction hypothesis. I can multiply by 2 on both sides without any change in the inequality. So I'll get 2 raised power k minus 2 is greater than k plus k. Or in other words, I can write 2 raised power k minus 2 is greater than k plus 1 because k is strictly greater than 1. Right? And do you notice what is this? This is what I actually had to prove over here. And uh, so yeah, our induction hypothesis is true. And it's really fascinating because all we really had to do was multiply by 2 and uh, simplify it. And we see that our induction hypothesis is true. Therefore, our claim is true. So therefore, um, 2 raised to the power n minus 3 is indeed greater than n for all n greater than or equal to 6. But you might think that this is something very, very uh, vague, right? It's, it's very abstract. It's not related to the question. You know, what I basically did, I just wrote this case and I just went down to some abstract claim. But you'll actually see that this is very important because we have 2 raised to the power n minus 3 over here as well. And obviously bc is equal to n. So there's probably some, some similarity over here. And let's see what that is. Okay. So we have this claim that I just proved by induction. Now notice that a was 2 raised to the power n minus 3 times b. So effectively a is greater than n. Right. Because a is essentially equal to 2 raised to the power n minus 3 times b. Now, this quantity is greater than n, and a is obviously uh, basically a quantity greater than n multiplied by another quantity. So, obviously, a will al always be greater than n. Right? Now, a is greater than n. Now, what next? Now, we also know that a plus 1 was equal to c. Let me just remind that. Uh, where did it go? Yes, this. a plus 1 was equal to c. Obviously, we see that c is greater than a. c is 1 more than a. And C is greater than A greater than N. So we can essentially imply that C is greater than N. So we have these two results, A greater than N and C greater than N. If you also remember, B, C was actually equal to N. Or in other words, I can write B is equal to N by C. But since C is greater than N, B cannot be an integer. B is not an integer. Right? Because N a number divided by a larger number will never be an integer, right? It will always be a fraction or a rational number. It can never be an integer if you think about it. So therefore, n greater than or equal to 6 will have no solutions. Because essentially our claim, this, this, entire, this entire claim is only valid for greater than or equal to 6. Before that, it's not valid, right? So this entire construction, this entire inequality that I'm forming are all, are all only valid for n greater than or equal to 6, that means if solution exists, it will only be 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm not including 1 because we've already seen n is greater than 1. n is equal to 1 does not work. We've already seen that before. So n is equal to 2, 3, 4, 5 will give our only possible solution. So if a solution exists, it will be at these four particular values. Right? And we can check them. You can check them at the end. So I'll just move on to case number 2. And uh, you can check them. Or uh, we'll just check them at the end. I think that'll be more comfortable. Now... Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to assume that A is odd, right? Basically the other case, uh, in case one, I assume A is even, right? 
So here a plus one will gobble up all the even parts. Two is one n minus three times p, and a will obviously gobble up everything else, right? And in this case, b c is obviously equal to n. Now here we use a similar argument. Two uh, is for n minus three is greater than n plus one for all n greater than or equal to six. And this is basically the same thing what I had done before. And this I'm gonna leave you. I'm gonna leave this to you actually. Maybe try proving this by yourself. Same induction, basically the same process, and uh, try doing this yourself. It's very simple actually, and you just prove it by induction. And once you have proved this claim, you will notice that essentially a plus one is to the power n minus three times b, and because this quantity is greater than n plus one, that implies that a plus one is greater than n plus one. You can just subtract one from both sides. So it essentially implies that a greater than n, and because a is equal to c. That implies c is greater than n, or I can just write a is equal to c greater than n. But b c was equal to n, and by a similar assertion, b is n by c, and b can never be integer, right? This is the same argument. C is greater than n. You have a smaller number divided by a bigger number. Obviously, can never be an integer. Can never ever be an integer, right? So no solutions again. For all n greater than or equal to six, because again this assertion, this assertion was only for n greater than or equal to six. So therefore, if a solution exists, it will be at n two three four five. What are we seeing from here? We are seeing that both in case number two and up top in case number one, only solutions are at n two three four five, and that's all that we have to check, right? So we just check these four values and see at which of them the quantity two is for n minus one times n plus one. Is indeed a perfect square, and we see that at n is equal to three is not a perfect square. At n is equal to three, it is not a perfect square. At n is equal to four, also it's not a perfect square. But at n is equal to five, we get um, two raised power five minus one four times five plus one sixteen times five is eighty plus one eighty one, which is nine squared. So n is equal to five is our only solution, actually. Right. So that was quite fascinating. I think that was a very uh, lucrative discussion. Oh. Thing called parity, and that concept of parity really helped us to kind of simplify this down to two distinct cases. After which, it was some really good induction, and we powered through the solution. So I hope you learned something from that, and um, hopefully you can think about this parity in number theory problems. Okay, so moving on, we are studying books lessons of senior math olympiads. I am a compendium, Paul Lomel's by Barbeau, elementary number theory by Sapinski, graph theory by Harari, combinatorics by Brualdi, secrets and inequalities, and functional equations and how to solve them by Christopher G. Small. Okay, so at the end, we have some of a challenging problem, and I wanted to find all positive integers m comma n such that this product two raised to the m minus one times three raised to the n minus one is a perfect square. Now, admittedly, this is a challenging problem. Okay, this is not the easiest. Um, at least the methods I found were not easy. If you found an easy method, let me know. And maybe try this out. Maybe try reducing mod m. Maybe try using some parity ideas. Whatever comes to your brain, just uh, give it a go. And if you're able to do it, let me know. Until then, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much, and bye bye. Inta programs are designed for students who are passionate about mathematics. and they are personalized with one on one training individual evaluation and remedial sessions the reason chinta students are successful over the last 10 years because they are taught by mathematicians and real olympians from leading universities in india united states and europe some of our students come back to teach at chinta from oxford cambridge harvard mit ucla isi cmi iits tifr and iisc for more information visit chinta.com